Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, where an expert from Facebook discusses dynamic ads for automotive. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We were awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented seventh year in a row. We also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites three times, plus Pretty recently, FCA and Ford have both announced that we're now an approved vendor. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Do you want to know more? <laughs> yeah, you do. You can check us out at DealerOn.com. And by the way, I wanted to let you know, half of you are losing valuable traffic because of a slow mobile site. Well, that's no good, because our good friends at Google estimate that well over half your website traffic is coming from mobile devices. But don't you worry, because DealerOn now offers a mobile site speed test for free. You can get yours after this webinar. Just give us your URL and let the magic begin. It's a great way to see how your site stacks up to the competition. And we have an incredible show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Gabrielle Garrison as our presenter today. Gabrielle Garrison is on Facebook's Automotive Global Sales Team, where she helps dealerships and dealership partners scale their marketing efforts to sell more cars on Facebook and Instagram. With eight years in the media business, Gabrielle has held positions in all aspects of the advertising space, ranging from radio to traditional media and currently digital media. An alumnus of the University of South Florida in Tampa, Gabrielle got her start in advertising, helping small businesses in Tampa succeed in their marketing objectives, and later moved to digital advertising for eBay.com, helping brands such as Progressive, Ford, the Chrysler Group, Ronald McDonald House, and State Farm, just to name a few. Currently living in Austin, Texas, Gabrielle can be reached on LinkedIn. The link is on the page now. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. Don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Facebook. Oh, they're giving away an amazing prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Facebook swag bag filled with all kinds of Facebook awesomeness. I, I got to tell you people, I am very jealous. I can't win this prize, but you can. But you have to be on the live broadcast to win it. So stay tuned for your chance to walk away with this super cool prize today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. Fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience, and we want to hear what you have to say about today's presentation. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's show, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Gabrielle Garrison, like I said, on LinkedIn at LinkedIn.com slash in slash Gabrielle Garrison. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. All right, everyone, let's get started. Let's learn all about Facebook's dynamic ads for automotive. Gabrielle Garrison, my love. How are you doing, Fireball? I am doing great. It's always a great day when I get to be on your webinar. So. Hey, you stole my line. <laughs> I love having I love you here, too, girl. <laughs> Yeah, no, always love it, and thank you guys so much uh, for coming out. I know if you're a big soccer fan like I am, there are some games you could be watching, um, so appreciate your time here today. Why don't you remind um, everyone who you're rooting for so they all know. <laughs> I'm rooting for Argentina, um, who is playing today. Um, I'm in Central Time, which is why I'm going to be saying I have a hard stop at 1230 because I'm very dedicated to watching that game today. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm pretty so. sure it's not for the game. But I, I do understand the hard I, stuff. Now, before I have my go. jersey on, I have my scarf and everything. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to yell at a TV and <laughs> we, that so. <laughs> we 
are going to see that a little bit later on during the Q&A session. But before you get started, I just want to let you know, Tamara, she already wrote in. She said, I am so excited for this. This is sure to be another awesome dealer on Webby with Eliana and Gabrielle. Thanks, ladies, in advance. And I know you're going to tell everyone what Dynamic Ads for Automotive is, and I see you already have it shortened to DAA. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious, are you going to let us know how long this has been around? Because I feel like this is a new thing. It is. It is pretty new. We actually just launched this in Q4 of last year, so it, the November time frame. Um, so yeah, so it's um, a lot of people still don't know about it, and um, we wanted to let people know because we've seen such great results with the partners we work with so far. Um, but one thing that we have learned is that a lot of people have been using our older dynamic product ads, which is an e-commerce focused dynamic ads. Um, to um, that has been around for a while to do what Dynamic Ads for Autonaut does. So I wanted to focus a lot of this time on um, the benefits of DAA. We have a lot of media acronyms here at Facebook um, and how it differs from Dynamic Product Ads, DPA. And um, we're going to be going over that. This will also be beneficial for people who have um, never even experienced Dynamic Ads before. Um, but it's important to know um, a lot of the differentiations of it and then how dynamic ads for autos works because in the world you know that has shifted to mobile at a record speed mm. you know the automotive industry has an unprecedented opportunity to connect with consumers share information and build lifelong relationships in new and innovative ways right so but how can market automotive automotive marketers make the most of this mobile world you know how can they drive success Right, so this presentation is intended to help you get the most value from Facebook by discussing the impact of mobile people and businesses, the changes in automobile shopping today, and how brands can drive growth by leveraging the power of dynamic ads. So let's get started. Um, so um, people today are using mobile, right, to research, which builds intent. We all know that, right? We know multiple devices offer multiple opportunities. 88% of car buyers use the internet to shop. You know, car buyers are also using a variety of devices to shop, including desktop and laptop computers, smartphones, and even tablets. That's a lot of opportunity to reach a consumer. Right, so what does this mean for auto marketers, dealerships like yourself? What are the implications, right? You need to keep a pulse on auto shopping behavior to make sure you're planning, for planning today for tomorrow and adapting to the various ways your customers want to learn about your vehicles from crafting short form videos to providing shopping information right at their fingertips. So how do we do this, right? What are the key growth drivers for the automotive business to do this, right? So you have to create intent by driving that discovery. You can't wait for the intent to happen at search. You have to create it beforehand. You want to be able to reach out in a relative and timely manner so that you can grab that lead the moment that they're showing that intent. And then you want to enable scale in real time. You know, everyone is different, right? Facebook has over 2 billion people, but they're not all the same, right? How do you in that sea of people find the auto intenders while they're still in the consideration phases and do so in a highly relevant manner? You know, after all, a potential buyer who just had a child is going to have a very different buying behavior than someone who just graduated from college, who in turn has a very different behavior from someone who just retired, right? They're all, they are each looking for different features and have different values when it comes to buying a vehicle. So relevancy is absolutely key for such a personal transaction and every impression and interaction with a customer is a chance to move them down that purchase funnel one step closer to visiting your dealership. But that relevancy can be incredibly difficult to find, right? So it's something we thought heavily about over here at Facebook with the solutions we've built by thinking not just about targeting but also what additional interactions and services could help you find that right person and deliver that right vehicle and that message at the right time. So this is where dynamic ads for automotive comes in, right? With these dynamic ads for automotive, you can capture intent signals to automatically promote relevant products from your entire catalog of, across Facebook and Instagram, right? You're not just reaching people who express interest in looking at a product they are looking at an automotive product. They are looking at an automobile, and they're expressing interest. And this is where Dynamic Ads for Automotive comes in and captures that intent and shows them an, uh, an ad on Facebook or Instagram, wherever they're searching. Um, it looks similar to this, of course, much nicer vehicles than icon images you'll have on your ads. But this is basically what it can look like on desktop 
and on a mobile device on Facebook and Instagram. And basically, um, what, what it does is um, you can, it allows you to serve the most compelling and relevant vehicle information to a person, right? So you share a catalog of available inventory to Facebook that's from your website. And then Facebook identifies those people who have visited your website or otherwise shown intent. And then Facebook determines the most relevant combination of vehicles to show to that person, all the way down to the VIN-specific um, vehicle that they were looking at. So before I go into a little more, um, I wanted to start with a poll question. Because I think that's a great idea. All right, audience, guess what? We have three poll questions for you today, but the first one is on the screen now. So let's get in there. Let's get involved. Let's get your votes in, all right? The question is, before signing up for this webinar, had you heard about Facebook's dynamic ads for automotive? Please select one of the following answers. Yes, and I'm excited to learn more. I heard about it, but I didn't know a thing about dynamic ads for automotive. Well, that's not the same thing as dynamic product ads, right? I didn't realize Facebook had dynamic anything until today. Or, nope, first time I've heard of dynamic ads for automotive. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And, of course, I want to invite all of you who are out there listening today. So please make sure you get your votes in. I'm sorry, votes. Your questions in. Well, get your votes in too, but get your questions in for Gabrielle Garrison. I cannot stress enough. She is a wealth of knowledge. She's been in the digital marketing arena for years. She's been with Facebook making waves and, and doing all kinds of amazing things. And she is by far one of my favorite presenters to work with because she always brings it. So if you have questions about anything really regarding Facebook and especially about dynamic ads for automotive, get those questions in and let's see if Gabrielle can't help you, all right? All right, so the votes, wow. Gabrielle, I'm not gonna lie. Almost everyone has already taken part in this poll. This is amazing. Audience, I couldn't love you more than I do right now. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. We're gonna close up this poll in another couple seconds, but I wanna thank you in advance for your answers to this. We got two more poll questions coming your way in a little bit, but for right now, let's check out what you had to say about this particular question. All right, Gabrielle. Check this out. Before signing up for this webinar today, had you heard about Facebook's dynamic ads for automotive? Wow, impressive. A majority, 61% of today's audience, said yes, and they're excited to learn more. Love it. 18% of today's audience said they heard about it, but they really don't know anything about dynamic ads for automotive. Don't you worry, you 18%. You are going to find out a lot today. 2% of today's audience say it's not the same thing as dynamic product ads, right? That is correct. Another 2% of today's audience said that they didn't realize Facebook had dynamic anything until today. Watch and learn. And then the remaining 17% of today's audience say, you know what? Nope. First time I've ever heard about dynamic ads for automotive. Gabrielle, it's a good thing, right? It's good stuff, right? Yeah, this is really, really good. Um, we've been trying really hard um, to scale our educational efforts and scale our um, PR efforts to, to reach dealerships uh, because we're a very small team. We'd love to go to dealerships directly and help everyone individually. So um, we're very focused on scaled um, everything for you guys. So um, yeah, 61% is really great. It makes me happy. So thank you guys also as well for answering the poll questions. It's uh, very appreciated by me. <laughs> and, and, and me as well. And, and yeah. audience, remember, Get your questions in early for Gabrielle. We're going to have a hard stop at half past the hour. So you definitely want to get your questions in because I go in order. All right, Gabrielle, I know you have a lot to get to. Where do we go from here? Yeah, so um, now I kind of want to walk through the benefits and, um, of DA and how it differs from dynamic ads or dynamic product ads. You know, if you're currently using dynamic uh, product ads, with uh, the e-commerce product catalog and pixel setup to promote your vehicles, we highly recommend switching to dynamic ads for automotive, which is optimized to reach and retarget in-market um, car buyers. Right, so why should you switch? You know, dynamic ads for automotive is unique, right, in that it leverages the automotive-specific parameters to provide a more optimal targeting, retargeting, and recommender algorithm. For example, this ad format accounts for the location of the vehicle when delivering the ad to the target audience, whereas the original version of dynamic 
product ads for e-commerce does not. With dynamic ads for automotive, you know, you can easily reach in market shoppers with the most relevant content based on where each person is within the customer journey. And I kind of just want to walk through um, specific differences for you from a higher level, right? So vertical is that it's tailored towards right. So obviously dynamic ads for automotive is going to be tailored towards automotive specific vertical and signals, while dynamic product ads is e-commerce and retail learned. Um, so it's taking all of the behaviors of people who shop for e-commerce, shop for that same products, that same t-shirt that Target might have 10,000 of, right? That's very different than an automotive vehicle. So we needed a specific product that captured the right intent and signals. And targeting is a little different, right? So um, there's retargeting for new and used vehicle inventory on dynamic ads for automotive. Um, with dynamic product ads, you had to do a lot of retargeting workarounds, which required you to pay a lot more attention to dynamic ads. Dynamic ads for me, I call it the set it and forget it uh, product of Facebook, kind of like, you know, a crock pot um, or the George Foreman grill. They always say set it and forget it. This is like that. This should be a one-time set it and then you forget it and then you let Facebook do the work for you. That wasn't the case when you, with dynamic product ads because you were always having to do so many workarounds. Um, one of the things is the feeds are different, right? The vehicle feeds that you give us to um, power these ads. So the automotive um, version has auto-specific par parameters like model, model trim, uh, make. Um, E-commerce uh, dynamic product ads had pattern, material, and like other very common field names for e-commerce uh, clients. And then the dynamic ads, product ads feed was one static feed that could take into account updates to base price and availability, whereas dynamic ads for automotive is very location coherence based. Um, so for example, my sister actually just recently uh, bought a Volvo um, SUV and she wanted me to see it before she bought it. So she sent me the link to the dealership website down in um, Fort Lauderdale and I looked at it and then um, it and then I got an ad um, for that vehicle. And it would make sense for more for my sister to get the ad, right? Because she lives in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and it shouldn't be me getting the vehicle. I was just looking at it to give recommendations. Um, Dynamic ads for automotive will take into fact the location of the person showing the intent and show them that vehicle and that ad versus someone like me who I live in Texas really, really hot out here. It's uh, so hot. I could probably use like a great ice cream or Spumoni or something like that right now. Um, I, it doesn't make sense for me to um, get those ads. So that's a big, big differentiator and something that when the e-commerce space doesn't really matter because everything's online. Another thing is pixel implementation, right? So dynamic product ads for e-commerce has no auto-specific parameters. Um, dynamic ads for automotive does. We have very relevant fields that you can add body style, vehicle state, new or used. And we're going to go over that um, a little later on. So the algorithm, the algorithm, the, the magic behind the curtain, the questions I get the most about our algorithms, things I don't even know, it is that guarded, um, is very different um, on both of these, right? So I have spoke about how dynamic product ads are e-commerce and retail learned, right? When you're buying something online that is something that is the same no matter who buys it, um, that's a very different process. That's a very different shopping behavior than someone who is buying a vehicle, right? So the algorithm doesn't take into account on dynamic product ads how people search for vehicles, when they search for vehicles, the intent behind it. Dynamic ads for automotive takes all of those auto-specific factors and puts them into the algorithm so that we're giving the people the right ads, we're giving them the vehicle that they saw down to the VIN in that ad, and if it's not available still, they're getting ones that are exactly like the ones that they just, um, that they saw. So auto, um, the specific rulings around them are different. I, again, um, the dynamic product ads is e-commerce and retail learn, so it uses rules around that. Um, and then we have different rules now for, um, for dynamic ads for automotive, right? You can um, express um, interest in showing ads to people who searched for a vehicle, right? Or viewed specific v um, D uh, DDP pages. These are things that you couldn't really do in dynamic product ads. And if you did, there were, you had to hack it all the time and it and required constant babysitting, which should not be a case for an automated ad. 
The only thing that is the same is the creative. So um, single image and carousel formats are available for both. Um, that's the only similarity that they have. So for, as far as running dynamic ads for automotive, when you look um, at the setup or you look at some of our documentation, it looks pretty much the same, right? You're going to have to upload your vehicle inventory to your business manager, place the Facebook pixel on your website, um, choose your targeting options, and then you set up your ad template and then you go. That all sounds the same, right? But it is actually very different. And I want to walk through some of these things in, within what you'll see in the interface that is a little different that you're going to have to do. Um, but before that, I want to ask another poll question, if we could. Let's do it. All right, audience. Second poll question is on your screen now. <laughs> By the way, we have some great questions that have come in from the audience, and they are just uh, non-stop great questions. So audience, keep them coming, and we're going to help you out with your dynamic ads for automotive on Facebook. For right now, yeah, let's get to this poll question. How do you currently utilize dynamic ads for automotive on Facebook? We want to know, so please select one of the following answers. I use dynamic ads for automotive, and it works great for us. I just started using it. I need help to get better results. I haven't yet shifted to dynamic ads for automotive yet. <laughs> I use Facebook, but I don't use any form of dynamic ads, or I don't advertise on Facebook. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results, and we want to know what's happening at your dealership. So get those votes in, and <laughs> I love these questions that are coming in. Gabrielle, I'm just going to warn you right now. Lots of questions, lots of amazing questions, and you're probably going to be sitting there a nice long time uh, answering them. So keep your questions, uh, keep, I'm sorry, keep your answers nice and compact so we can get through as many of these wonderful questions that are coming our way today as possible, all right? And audience, if you have sent in your question, you better sit tight. Because if you leave the broadcast, I won't even ask your question, all right? All right, here we go. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, right? they got to sit and stay, right? I think that's fair. We have a pretty cool um, prize as well, so you definitely want to stick around. Definitely want to do that. All right, great answers have come in from the audience. And audience, thank you so much. You're amazing. We're going to close this poll. Oh, I don't know what happened to the screen. And let's share these results. All right, how do you currently utilize dynamic ads on Facebook? Well... 6% of today's audience say that they use dynamic ads for automotive, and it works great for them. Fantastic. 21% of today's audience, ooh, a lot, just started using DAA, and they admit they need help to get better results. We gotcha. The majority, however, 45% of today's audience have not yet shifted to dynamic ads for automotive yet. 23% of today's audience say they use Facebook, but they admit they don't use any form of dynamic ads. And 6% of today's audience, they don't advertise on Facebook. What? All right, Gabrielle, any response to the results from this second poll question of ours? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, um, the 44% that haven't shifted, I mean, thank you for coming because this webinar is definitely for you guys. I'm going to um, go over the differences. Um, and I've gone over a little bit of it. Um, and then, yeah, the 6% that don't advertise on Facebook. I'm, uh, I'm very curious about you guys. Um, hopefully, uh, I can change your mind. Uh, uh, but, of course, always do what works best for you. But uh, if you have those 6%, if you have questions, please, please put them in because I'm curious to talk to you guys. Well, you know what? Uh, maybe, maybe they were looking for this product. This product seems much more robust and much more geared towards selling cars on Facebook. So maybe this is what they were looking for. I mean, this could be it. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, I think um, Facebook is uniquely positioned because um, I don't think there's a lot of people out there building automotive-specific advertising products um, and that, that are for dealerships. I think we're uniquely positioned in that sense. So hopefully um, I'll change some minds and uh, see some DAA implementation of my own. And if you're in the Texas, Austin area, hopefully I'll see your ads. Yeah. All righty. Um, so the last section um, is just migrating from uh, DPA to DAA. Um, this is um, for those who have never done it before. You, this will still be relevant because you're going to see what you would do as far as setup goes. Um, so I just kind of want to walk through some of the things. So one of the things we talked about, you know, 
was the Facebook pixel. You know, in order to retarget customers at different stages of your purchase funnel, you must modify your Facebook pixel or add it if you haven't had it before on select pages. You know, in, in, in addition to the code installed on all pages of your website, which is our standard pixel code that you get, Dynamic Ads for Automotive requires four standard events that need to be added to different pages of your website. Um, and it's best to work with your web developer if you have one to modify the pixel for each of the following pages. And these four standard events are view content, which is what you use to place on your VDP pages to track viewing those. Um, search to track interest in vehicles um, when people search on your website. Add to wish list. This is something that is newer um, to track vehicles that have been favorited, starred, or have some sort of intention to purchase that you put on your website. And then lead. Of course, to track the submission of a lead if you have a lead form on your um, web page or some sort of lead um, on your website that you want to track. So those are the four standard events that are required to, um, to have your pixel um, adjusted to, in order to run these dynamic ads. Another thing that we have um, that is called parameters. So parameters, are um, most of them are optional, but they just give you um, additional information if you want to um, get more concrete about what you're tracking on a page, right? Um, say you have um, the OEM say there's a certain vehicle we need to get you to get off the lot and you want to track that and make sure people are looking at that, right? So you can do the body style of a car or the make um, and make sure that um, people are viewing that or seeing how um, the activity for that vehicle is happening. So there's a lot of optional ones you'll see here, and you're going to see a lot more in the documentation that you're going to be taking home. Um, but the two required ones are content type and content ID, right? So the content ID reported from the Facebook pixel must correspond to the ID column from the catalog, right? So you're going to have um, content IDs or content type of supports a vehicle, and then you're going to have certain IDs for each vehicle. And then your web developer can go into more about this, but then you, there's a certain parameter in content ID where you can just do an array so it dynamically pulls in the ID. Um, if you use a tag manager provider, you know many of the tag management providers have integrated with Facebook to make it easier to set up um, these things for your website and um, through dynamic ads. So reach out to them directly if you use a tag management partner and then they can help you um, with the pixel code as well. So now getting into actually setting up um, the catalogs and everything that you need that's in the interface. Um, so one of the things you're going to need is to build a catalog and you're going to need to do that um, with data feeds of course. You know catalog is a file that contains your inventory data, right? So the list of vehicles, new or used that you have for sale. So a data feed is the actual data file containing the details about your vehicle inventory that is used to populate the catalog, right? So the home nets, the Viato, VIN solutions, if whoever you use, they will have this information for you to take um, into your Facebook ads manager or business manager to make this catalog. When you have, um, when you do um, our cat within the catalog manager, you're going to see a bunch of different types. Um, E-commerce is probably the one that a lot of people are currently using now that haven't moved over to Dynamic DAA, Dynamic Ads for Auto, but we have the new feature now, Auto. Um, of course, you're going to want to choose that. So once you click that, um, it's going to ask you a few questions. You know, you're going to want to select um, the business. If you are an agency and you have multiple um, dealerships you're working with, you're just going to make sure that you um, choose the right business, and then you're going to name your catalog. And then after that, um, it's usually going to ask you um, some certain questions. It's, it's going to ask you to import inventory into your Facebook. This is where your feed is going to come in. Um, so, and there's certain options that you can do with your feeds, right? So feeds, either you can upload once or set a schedule. Um, and what we mean by this is um, it, there's, it's very different, right? So uploading once means it's a more manual process. It's not really uploading once. But that's if you have like a CSV, Excel file of, of all of your inventory, and then you would upload it in there, right? Um, so that is one way to do it. Or you can do a set a schedule. Setting a schedule is when you have a URL feed from those feed providers like HomeNet, V Auto, Vin Solutions, and then you're going to um, just put the feed in there and upload it that way. You know, we recommend you enter a feed URL and schedule these um, refreshes, you're going to see that it's going to ask you to schedule um, refreshes either hourly or daily or weekly. 
in order to automatically keep your catalog up to date. You know, this helps you avoid showing ads that are out of stock inventory and automatically adds new inventory as your catalog changes, right? And then to represent your inventory accurately, you should update your data feeds as often as your product inventory changes, right? Most advertisers have found an hourly update is sufficient, um, but if you need more frequent updates, you can do that through our API, but um, hourly or daily updates is usually um, the most popular used right now. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is, it's, um, it might ask you if you haven't already, is to connect your event source. What that is, is your pixel, right? Um, so once you click that, if you are just a single dealership, you're going to see the one pixel that you have on your website. But if you have multiple websites or if you're an agency managing multiple clients, you're going to see a number of pixels on there. So just make sure that you're connecting the right pixel to the right catalog. Um, those, that's a very, very important step it, that is commonly missed. Um, to run dynamic ads because the way that the dynamic ads work and that the right vehicles are sh shown is that the pixel is talking to your website, takes that information, it then talks to the vehicle catalog, and the vehicle catalog is what um, takes that uh, recommendation out and then puts it in the ad and shows it to that user on Facebook or Instagram. So that's a very, very important step to remember. After you've made your catalog, after you've um, connected your pixel, um, definitely check all of the things that you have put together in our feed debugger tool. This is within your ads manager. It's a step you'll see if you're going through the same steps I'm showing you. Um, this tool allows you to paste in a product feed and validate the feed for errors or warnings without creating an upload session or adding products to your product catalog, right? This is helpful in the early stages of integration when you don't have a product catalog yet and you don't have a fully fleshed out feed yet. If you're still trying to figure that out, right? You can just paste your test feed, detect errors and warnings, and ensure that the feed format is correct before actually setting it up for all of your products. So the one thing that you're going to want to do um, is after that is to create an ad template. So for dynamic ads, they look identical to other single or image or carousel ads that are available on Facebook or Instagram or the audience network. However, instead of individually creating an ad for each of your products like you do for other objectives, you just need to create an ad template um, that automatically uses images and details from your product feed. So what you'll do is you'll go into your ads manager and you'll see this here. Um, when you go to create a campaign, you're going to choose an objective. What you're going to want to choose is catalog sales. It's right over there under the conversion column. Um, you're going to want to um, name your campaign choose your catalog um, that you created already, and then press continue. Um, if you're familiar with the ads manager, um, you're going to know that your next step is going to be going to the ad set. So one of the things that is going to be um, different um, that you're not going to recognize if you've never run dynamic ads before or dynamic ads for automotive, at the top it's going to uh, have a vehicle section um, set, right? So what this is is basically um, for a vehicle set, it's a list in, of inventory and a catalog that you can use to advertise, right? So each catalog can have more than one vehicle set, right? So if you have all of your vehicles in one, and you want to create a vehicle set for all of the sedans in your catalog or a separate vehicle set for all the SUVs in your catalog, you can. Um, so vehicle sets are defined by certain filters in the catalog and are created when you set up an ad campaign. So, um, and one thing to note is that only admins of your catalog can create vehicle sets. So whoever is running your ads for you, you're, you're going to want to make sure that they are an admin of your catalog as well. And that's something in the process flow when you're creating your catalog. You have the option to assign certain people to manage your catalog. Um, so you can do vehicle sets. You can, create, you can create before you create your ad template if you want, but it gives you the option to create a vehicle set as well within the ads manager flow because you're going to need to select one in order to run these ads because they wanted, our system wants to know what vehicles are you wanting to show for this campaign. Most people do all of their vehicle catalogs, but as I said, if you're trying to get rid of certain vehicles, like there's some SUVs that you need to get off the lot, some people might want to focus a campaign strictly on their SUVs, and you can do that. So um, under the ad set as well, the audience section is going to look a little different, right? So you can choose to reach an audience of people who have taken actions on your site, like searching for a car, 
Um, you can also choose to exclude people from an audience you've already saved, right? So for example, you can retarget a saved audience, um, but you can exclude people who have recently purchased a car. I think that's really important. Exclusion targeting is not used a lot, um, but if someone recently purchased a car, you don't want to spend your money showing them more ads, right? That you've already gotten their business. So try to exclude um, people who have recently purchased a car. You can do that by uploading your um, car purchases from your CRM into our um, interface as a custom audience. But you'll see here the um, when it where it says include, um, you can say search. You can include people who search for vehicles in a certain amount of days, who view content, who add to wish list. You'll see these words are very similar um, to the pixel standard events because that is what they are. That is what they're tracking. Um, so lots of different options to ways and ways that you can um, search um, or you can capture intent from users, and we give you all the options to do so via those four required standard events. So when you come to the ad level, right, so the ad level is going to be um, very similar to what you've seen in any kind of ad that you've created on Facebook, right? You're going to get the option to um, choose your um, format. You can do usually videos, um, images, carousels, canvas. You've seen all of them if you've run an ad before. Um, it's going to be very similar. You're going to choose usually an, um, a single image if you just want to show one um, vehicle at a time in an ad, or you're going to choose carousel if you want to show multiple vehicles at a time in an ad. Um, one thing you're going to want to pay attention to is um, the headline and news, um, news feed link descriptions. You know, you're going to see that these are different than what you are used to if you've run dynamic product ads. You know, you're going to see the automotive specific intent signals. Um, that you can um, bring in from your feed and put as a headline. If you want to do the vehicle title, some people do the mileage, some people do the price. Um, that is an option that you can bring in and it automatically filters in from your feed. And then you just choose a call to action and then you click place order. And then your ad template is made and you can run ads now um, with dynamic ads for automotive. So um, a few things I want to go over um, are just some best practices. Um, this is a new product, but we've already identified a lot of best practices. I wanted to show you four of them that are most important. Um, the first one is avoid creative changes during high traffic sales events, right? Creative changes may impact the delivery of your ads in the middle of a campaign. So avoid making creative changes during time sensitive campaigns, such as like a holiday. Um, but if you must make creative changes, do so at a low traffic time, usually in the very early mornings is when that um, is the most relevant. Um, one of the most important things, this is the one best practice, like I really want you to remember, when you choose an optimization method, and that's basically saying, like, what do you want us to track? What do you want people, um, our system, to um, track or grab from people and serve ads to and track for you? Um, we, the option for conversions, which is basically optimizing for those four required standard events on your website, is much better than optimizing for, um, for clicks, right? Clicks, um, I always say, um, a lot of people um, love tr um, tracking clicks, right? Because in the search-based world, even if those clicks bounce, that shows intent, right? Because the user initiated the search and then they eventually clicked. When you're on Facebook, it's much different because you're creating the intent. Those bounce clicks are not as relevant as they are in a search environment. You want to get rid of those bounce clicks. This does that when you optimize for one of those standard events, like a lead or a view content, because we're not just grabbing the people who are most likely to click. We're grabbing the people who are most likely to take an action on your website. If you're optimizing for view content, we're tracking those people who are most likely to want to view those vehicles. You might see that you have less clicks when you make this switch, but the thing is, we're giving you more quality traffic, not just traffic in general, and we're getting rid of those bounce clicks for you, so you're spending your money on your most qualified audience. The next thing you're going to want to do, um, one thing uh, that we have learned that's interesting is a lot of people, they'll set up their campaigns and they'll start it, at the day that they want to do it, right? Well, the thing is with dynamic ads, um, it works when your pixel and your catalog are talking to each other, and they start helping um, your campaigns when your campaign is turned on. 
So um, a really good practice, if you, um, because over time, um, when our, the Pixel and the catalog learn and they try to talk to your campaign, the better um, the optimization gets. So you're going to want to set up your catalog, your Pixel, and your ad template at minimum seven days before your campaign starts. And instead of scheduling it to start the day that you want it to, have it start that day but then pause it. Because that means our system's like, oh, okay, there's a campaign starting. All of this information that we're learning on their website, we need to start funneling it through the campaign uh, to their campaign. So let's learn what they're doing in real time now and funnel those um, recommendations into the ads. If you pause your campaign versus starting it the day um, the day of, if you pause it a little early, it gives our system more time to learn. And then as soon as the campaign is supposed to start, you're going to see better optimizations than you would if you just started um, doing this the day of your campaign. One of the things I am a big proponent of is what we call placement optimization here over at Facebook. It's being able to, in one campaign, show the same ads across Facebook, Instagram, and the audience network. And they do adjust to the ad format um, that is being served in those environments. So make sure that when you're in the ad set stage, when they ask you what placements you want to um, try, try all of them, right? Because what that's telling our system is that you are willing to um, serve this ad to this user wherever they are on one of the Facebook family of apps and services, right? And that actually expands your reach and gives you a lower cost per outcome because we're trying to find the cheapest way for you to find your user so you get more bang for your buck. So make sure that it's super important that you guys do that. One thing that I want to introduce to you guys, um, and this was literally just released in March, the end of March. Um, one of the things we found out is that everyone loves dynamic ads, right? But they also love lead ads because it's all about the leads, right? So what we have done is we've taken our two most powerful ad formats for automotive when we put them together. Um, so Facebook dynamic ads for lead generation now allows you to let people show their interest in your product or service but um, by sending your contact details, right? So while standard dynamic ads direct users to your website where you can decide um, then what event you want to optimize against and maybe have them fill out a lead there, this allows you to get the lead right there and then, no extra effort for the user, and then the leads come directly to you. Wow, that is um, really cool. Yes, yes. This has been so popular. We've been testing it out with a couple of people, and we've already actually had really, really great results. Um, two case studies I want to talk about. Um, the first one is Hub City Ford, right? Um, so Hub City Ford, they're located in my home state of Florida. Um, they wanted to drive car shoppers to vehicle details pages that were likely to interest them and then retarget those shoppers with dynamic ads to convert them into leads and eventually customers. So Hub City Ford worked with its agency, Dealers United, uh, to design and execute a two-part 60-day Facebook campaign. And the first phase focused on building an audience um, that the second phase could retarget. So this initial campaign showed ads to different car shoppers, including lookalike audiences modeled on previous website behaviors and visitors, and audiences based on um, vehicles people were interested in, right? So then the, vehicle, um, the dealership grouped all of the potential car shoppers that they gathered from that into ad sets based on the vehicles they would most likely be interested in. Um, and then Dynamic Ads then pulled in the items from the catalog, and automatically generated ads that showed relevant inventory to each shopper, right? So Hub City Ford used the carousel ad format to show each person multiple models of a particular vehicle they were interested in. So for instance, seven different truck models to those likely interested in trucks. Um, the second phase used dynamic ads with lead generation as the ad objective targeted to a similar custom audience of people who had visited the dealer's website. The ad showed similar models of vehicles that these shoppers viewed on the dealership site, coupled with specific early stage calls to action like sign up for a test drive, apply for financing, or get approved. These people who filled out these forms became leads in the dealer CRM for the sales team then to contact. Um, and the one of the most important thing, and this is really critical to remember, is that Hub City Ford used Facebook's offline conversion tracking to identify sales that happened as a result of their Facebook ads. The dealer uploaded its sales reports from their CRM to Facebook's offline event, um, data. And this is how they achieved, uh, saw the success and w achieved what you're seeing on this screen. Um, so they successfully reached shoppers in the in market to purchase a 
par over 60 days between November of 2017 to January of 2018. You know, by showing this audience relevant inventory, um, Hub City Ford generated qualified leads resulting in 154 leads generated, 34 cars sold, 22% of leads from Facebook ended in a sale, and it ended up being their number one sales month ever achieved during the campaign. December was their number one sales month ever. Wow. Yes, and outside, having that kind of success outside summer sales event season for me was just astounding. This is one of my favorite case studies we currently have um, in the Facebook space. I have so many questions. <laughs> great, great. Um, and I do remember a long time ago, I wish I remember her name, but she was asking on a, one of um, your webinars, Eliana, with me, yeah. she was an RV dealership. So I was like, oh, and I saw this one from Camping World. Uh, my coworker, Greg Resnick, um, works with Camping World. And Camping World, you know, for this campaign, they wanted to create a great shopping experience that would generate high volume leads at a low cost. Everyone wants that, right? So their solution was dynamic ads for lead generation. So um, you're just seeing the template here. We don't have the actual picture, but this is kind of what a template looks like. Um, so to reach the right audience um, and create a strong shopping experience that would turn more website visitors into lead, Camping World used the dynamic ads um, for lead generation. Um, and for this campaign, um, what they did was they first uploaded their vehicle catalog with the relevant details such as make, model, and year. They set their pixel to track the view content and add to wish list events so they could deliver the most relevant ads to people who looked at the vehicle on the website or added it to their wish list. And then to fine tune its audience further, Camping World aimed at its campaign at the U.S. market and excluded a custom audience of people who had become a lead in the last 30 days. So they used that exclusion targeting that I said is very important to use. Um, so dynamic ads automatically populated this contact from our content from their catalog and then to show the most compelling inventory. Um, and they constantly updated their feed to make sure relevant inventory was in there. And um, then they, uh, the form populated for people to submit their leads and then that lead was routed to um, the appropriate dealership because they were doing a more national based campaign for all of their dealerships. And they succeed. Um, they have. They saw really strong returns, right? Uh, so between January 24th and April um, April 17th of this year, so very so um, very new, um, Camping World um, delivered a 3x return on ad spend and 40% average decrease in cost per lead, which is amazing. Um, so great results um, for not only just um, specific. Uh, specific car dealerships, franchise dealerships, but for RVs as well, any kind of vehicle inventory feed, this can be relevant for. Okay, real fast, because uh, I know we're getting yeah. close to the Q&A session, but I did want to bring up uh, my friend Joey, who's on the show right now, and um, he asked nice and early, hey, does DAA work for RVs and motorhomes? So I just wrote back to him and I was like, hey, it looks like it does. So he immediately wrote back in and he said, is this case study available with your other case studies? I'm getting an itchy trigger finger. So <laughs> it is, Joey. It is actually Joey's my brother's name. So I, I love, I love Joey's. Um, it does yeah, work unless you say it the Italian way. You know that, right? Joey. Joey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, no, Joey can, um, or Joey, it can, um, you can go to our Facebook um, for success um, website. It's facebook.com um, slash business slash success. That's where all of our success stories live for all verticals. If you just tailor, if you just choose the automotive vertical, these will all pop up. Camping World is definitely one of the newer ones, so it should be right at the top. Fantastic. All right, Joey. Itchy trigger finger and all. Um, time for our third and final poll question, I see. Yes, let's do it. Let's do this. All right, audience, it's on your screen. We want to know, now that you have seen how dynamic ads for automotive works, we want to know, are you going to be adding it to your Facebook advertising strategy uh, efforts? Oh, please let us know. Please select one of the following answers. Yes, I'm going to be adding it right after this webinar is over. Maybe this is a lot of information to process. You know what? I'm too comfortable with dynamic product ads to try this newfangled thing that you have going on. Or nah, 
I like ads that are more manual work and less automated. Hey, I know there's a few of you out there. We want to know what's happening at your dealership, what you're thinking, and what you got out of this presentation about dynamic ads for automotive from our good friend Gabrielle Garrison from Facebook. So let us know. Get those votes in. Still a lot of votes need to be coming in. So come on, let us know what you got. And we want to know what you think about dynamic ads for automotive and if you feel it's right for your dealership. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll, share the results, close up this presentation with some more automotive awesomeness that Gabrielle is going to share with us, and then give away a prize and get to the Q&A session. Sounds like a plan? That's right. All we have to do is get those votes in first. Still waiting for some more votes to come in. Oh my gosh. And I, Gabrielle, I'm not kidding. Lots of questions for you. But this is not a surprise to us, right? <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, I know. You're so good at the Q&A session. And by the way, audience, she has told me on numerous occasions that the Q&A session is kind of her favorite part of the whole thing. I, I say it's giving away the prize, but she says it's, it's the Q&A session. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get to those in just a few. So stay tuned for all of this amazingness. All right, Gabrielle, wait till you see the answers that have come in for this last poll question. Audience, thank you so much for your votes. We very much appreciate it. All right, here we go. Now that you have seen how Dynamic Ads for Automotive works, will you be adding it to your Facebook advertising efforts? Well, let's see. 60% of today's audience said, yes, they will. They're going to be adding it right after this webinar is over. Booyah! 35% of today's audience say, maybe. This is a lot of information to take in. A lot. I'm, I'm with you. Gabrielle is always bringing it. 0% said that they're too comfortable with dynamic products ads to try this newfangled dynamic ads for automotive. So that's good. And then I knew there was a few of you out there. 5% of today's audience say, nah, I like ads that are more manual work and less automated. I'm going to guess that you 5% are just practicing your sarcasm because I can't imagine that that to be true. Okay, Gabrielle, this is all good news, right? Great news. Yeah, I know. We definitely got some comedians in that 5% crowd. <laughs> I love me some good sarcasm, so I'm, I'm, I'm game. Uh, but yeah, no, um, so great to see that um, I converted hopefully those people, the 44% or so that said they were on DPA and um, haven't moved to DAA yet. But yeah, 60% um, adding that makes my heart very happy. It feels like I've, uh, I've completed my mission here. But um, yeah, it's great, great to know. Um, and now comes my favorite part of the webinar. So I'm pretty excited to see what everyone has to say. <laughs> All right, well, we're back to your slide deck. So what do we get after this? So, yeah, so before we go into the Q&A, um, just wanted to give you some resources. Um, so you'll see, um, make sure you download it. Um, I basically put together a one sheet of all of the links to our help center that will help you. And the reason why I put it into all these links is because our product team, we have a phenomenal product team over here um, dedicated to automotive. They recently released some of it just this week. And some of it that has been around, they have updated all of our resource documents to speak in a much simpler language to help you implement these. Um, so make sure you download that. For those who are watching the recording and um, might not have um, the information, if you don't go to the dealer on website um, after to download the content, the DA resources is on one of our Facebook resource pages, um, and the link is there. Um, just And I wanted to highlight the two newest things that it's in that DA resources that you guys are downloading now, hopefully, um, from this webinar is the Pixel Setup Guide. We have a Pixel Setup Guide just for automotive, so, um, so you know exactly what you need for automotive campaigns in general. And then the Transition Guide for those people who haven't transferred over yet, um, there is a guide that helps you do that, so make sure you pay attention to those. And then some action items. Um, just, um, if I probably haven't made it obvious already, just make sure you set up or adjust your pixel um, for DA now, not before you run your ads. I've always said about a pixel for everything. Um, as a wine lover, um, DA, uh, pixels are like wine, right? Um, if you open your a wine and you pour it and you let it aerate for a few minutes, it's going to taste better than it will when you just start drinking it right away. Pixels like the same. If you let it quote-unquote aerate for two to three weeks, 
it is going to run better than it would if you just placed it right away. And then you want to gather your vehicle feed and create a vehicle catalog in the catalog manager. This will require, if you work with a feed provider, um, to gather that feed from them and then bring it to the, your catalog manager on Facebook. And then um, set up that ad template and make sure you set it up seven days. Try to do it seven days before you start your campaign and then pause it until your start date so we can start learning for you and um, delivering the best ads for your customers. And now I'm ready for all those questions. I'm excited. Big yellow question mark. We love it. All right, let's turn on our webcams. Audience, I want to tell you about a few things before we get to your Q&A session. So, A, if you haven't gotten in your question yet, well, I don't know who hasn't sent in a question. We have so many questions in here. So get your question in, and let's see if Gabrielle Garrison can help you with your dynamic ads for automotive, um, which, by the way, yes, she can. And two, <laughs> I want to direct your attention over to the handout section of the GoToWebinar interface. we got two great handouts in there for you. First of all, yes, you can download today's slide deck directly from your GoToWebinar interface. So you want to look pretty low on the interface. Look for the word that says handouts. There's a little triangle next to that word. So click on that and then it'll open up. And in there you're going to find the two handouts. Number one, Gabrielle Garrison's deck from today. And number two, those great support resources that she gave you specifically for DAA. Now listen, if you have any problem whatsoever downloading those handouts, it's all right. I'm here to help. Email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com and I'll help you out and I'll send it to you, okay? But hopefully you can figure it out. All right, here we go. I'm very excited. I mean, I've been doing this a long time and still no game show music. I'm a little bit disappointed, but <laughs> we're going to give away a great prize. So, Gabrielle, you can go to the next slide. It's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, well, I announced that our good friends over at Facebook, they're giving a great prize today away on today's Dealer On webinar. One lucky webinar attendee is going to win a Facebook swag bag filled with all kinds of Facebook awesomeness. Trust me. You're going to want this. All right. All you have to do is be the first person to correctly answer our giveaway question, and you are going to be the proud owner of a Facebook swag bag delivered to you directly from our good friends over at Facebook. Now, if you are a vendor, we love you vendors, but we're going to ask you to kindly sit this one out. This prize is intended for dealership personnel only. We do appreciate your attendance today, however. Now, everyone else? Get ready, get to your keyboards. Good luck, everyone. Here we go. What are the four required standard events that you need to place on your Facebook pixel for dynamic ads for automotive? And please don't send me four different answers. Just give me one thing with all the four answers and push send. All right, here, let's see who we got. <laughs> Let me see. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many people answering. Oh my gosh, is this right? No, that's not right. <laughs> that is correct. Oh my goodness. Tamara Swats, you are correct. And I'm sorry, but Tamara, didn't you win the last one from Facebook? It is, she had the correct answer. View content search, add to wish list, and lead. Congratulations, Tamara Swats. Tamara, writing down your name, making it official. Congratulations, Tamara Swats. She's got fast fingers, can I just tell you? Um, Woohoo, I did, and the Instagram bottle is my favorite prize ever. <laughs> Nice. Well, get ready. I love this next swag bag so much. So. Oh, really? Well, Tamara, you got to send us the name of your dealership and, of course, your mailing address. It's going to be coming from our good friends over at Facebook. Oh, my gosh, she already did it. She is with Legacy Toyota in Tallahassee, Florida. Congratulations. She says, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, you're going to be getting that prize directly from Facebook headquarters. I love it. Um, Tamara? Sit still. Thank you so much. Love it, love it. I want to tell everyone else. I know your name wasn't Tamara Swats. I know. 
Mine wasn't either. And we're not getting this cool swag bag. But you know what? Come on back to next week. And who knows? You could win a really great prize for your dealership on another Dealer On webinar. For right now, big props to Tamara Swats. And of course, we've got to thank our good friends over at Facebook for their incredible generosity. Thank you, Gabrielle. All right. Thank you for playing along, everyone. Now, let's go to that next slide. And let's get some questions from the audience answered. Are you ready? I'm ready. I know you are. Okay. <clears throat> now, keep in mind, a lot of these questions came in before you actually got to the information. So if you've already answered it, answer them as quickly as possible because we got you for a solid half hour to get through all of these questions. So good luck, Gabrielle. Here we go. I call this a speed round. <laughs> I know you probably need some spumoni to get you through this. All right, here we go. <clears throat> um, you already covered this. But Jonathan asked, how do you share the catalog of available inventory with Facebook? Right, exactly. Take that feed, upload it into your catalog manager that you're going to see in your business manager or ads manager. Um, it's in the tools um, that you see in the settings, and um, you can set it up. Yep, and Gabrielle has already covered that today, so don't forget to download that handout of the deck. And that will definitely help you out with a step-by-step -step guide as well. Jonathan, thank you so much for your question. All right, next one comes from Morgan. How will Facebook determine auto intent and in-market shoppers when most of those audiences will be removed by October 1st? Yeah, so Morgan, you're talking about the um, partner categories. So partner categories, um, they're great. And um, actually, um, Oracle, um, you can contact them because they still will be available um, after you, after we get rid of them from our platform. You're just going to have to upload them as cost, uh, custom audience. So I encourage you to reach out to them. But we actually don't use these audiences for dynamic ads. We take um, the intent signals based on your website. And that's what we do through setting up the pixel. And then that pixel takes those intent signals of identifying users who are shopping for certain vehicles or searching for certain vehicles. And they use that. And, they, and that creates your audience of custom um, intent users that we show ads to. So you actually don't use the partner categories at all. It is, a, it is something that you can add on. We encourage you to just use the pixel data. Um, but good news is that um, you can do it as long as you set up your pixel the right way. I love that. All right. Thank you so much. Great question, Morgan. Keep them coming. All right. Next one comes in from CJ. CJ says, hello, Gabrielle. Hello, CJ. And then he says, <laughs> with third-party data going away, what recommendations would you have for audiences to test for the best results for dynamic ads for automotive? Gabrielle? Yeah, no, CJ, good question. Um, pixel data. Pixel data is going to be um, what you can use. Um, as I said, pixel, um, uh, Oracle and um, Axiom data is not going away. Um, completely, you're just going to have to, just like your um, direct mail or TV, you're going to have to work with them to create audiences the same way. Um, but um, use your pixel data. Set up those standard events and optimize towards um, those um, leads or those view details pages. You can create audiences um, in your audience manager in Facebook based on um, pixel signals on your website. Those tend to be your, the best use because it's coming directly from um, the source, which is your website. And then what you can do is you can create lookalike audiences based off of those users. Our lookalike audience feature is really great to expand your audience to users who are similar to those that you haven't touched yet. You can do that with pixel data, and you can also do that with your CRM data. You can do recent purchasers, you can do people who are um, lease renewals, equity mining is super important, so make sure to take those CRM data, upload it to Facebook, and then create a lookalike audience so you can um, capture users who are just like them that you haven't talked to yet. CJ, thank you so much. Great question. Great answer, Gabrielle. Okay, um, Miranda has a question. It's kind of, I think we kind of covered it, but let's see if you can maybe expand on it a little bit. How will DAA be impacted by Facebook's removal of certain in-market audiences or tar for targeting? Yeah, no, um, it is uh, a for the um, partner categories, you don't have to use these for um, dynamic ads, so it actually won't have any impact. Excellent. All right, Miranda, great question. Thank you. 
Daniel has the next question. He says, I saw the new Facebook virtual reality headsets at Best Buy. <laughs> it seems like a cool way to share product videos and information. How can we get a version of automotive that we can put in our service waiting areas? Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> wow. Um, man, uh, that's a great question. Wow, forward thinking there. Um, no, I mean, I think that's something that is um, an avenue that we can explore. We're just not there yet. We're still trying to figure out technology. But I encourage you guys, those Oculus Go's, I just tested one. It is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. You can experience things like the NBA Finals. I'm not even a basketball fan, but I watched that and I couldn't stop. Like, I could not stop watching the NBA Finals um, from 2018 because you experience it. I highly encourage you guys, if you know a friend who has an Oculus, try it out or buy one. Um, it is one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced. Wow. Sure. But, All right. All right. High props from Double G over here. All right, Daniel, good luck with that. Let us know how that works out. All right. Keiston has the next question. Keiston wants to know, what has the highest conversion? Dynamic carousel ads with last VDP visited along with model up and down model up and model down or last three VDPs visited? Woo! Um, that's someone who's doing a lot of testing and iterating, so good for you. <laughs> um, honestly, I think it really depends. Um, and that's, I know that's a hard answer to hear, um, but um, the thing is with dealerships, the website traffic is going to be different. Um, whether you're in urban and rural areas is going to be different. So you just honestly need to pay attention to your website traffic and what is getting the most attention. And then that is going to tell you what you need to do. Um, if it's last three, D, uh, last three VDPs and they're getting a lot of attention, then do it. If there's a certain vehicle that's getting a lot of attention, then maybe you need to focus on that. So just pay attention to what the pixel is telling you. Um, that's tracking the most, and um, that will help you decide. All right, Keiston, good luck. All right, let's see next question. Oh, Haley, hi, Gabrielle. Is DAA available to Canadian dealers? If yes, how can we switch from DPA to DAA? Thank you. Yeah, it is available to Canadian dealers, so you'll just go through the steps that um, I showed on the website, and, um, and then you'll be good to go. The only thing is, Canadians, um, you can um, use partner categories if you wanted to use them with it. I did say you don't have to. Um, uh, Canada likes to protect their people with their data, um, so good for you guys. Uh, but uh, but yeah, but lookalike audiences and those pixel data audiences is going to be um, your bet. And if you run Facebook ads, I'm sure you're familiar with it. So just follow the steps, and they're in the resource guide, and you'll be good to go. All right. Thank you so much. Great question, Haley. All right. Next one comes in from Eric. Eric says, when did Facebook make the official switch from DPA to DAA? Were agencies using DPA and the auto vertical informed somehow? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we officially introduced this product in November of 2017. So it has not been a long time. Um, and um, there are agencies out there that have made the switch. Um, we encourage everyone to make the switch. Um, it's still happening for a lot of people, but since it's fairly new, a lot of people are still um, getting used to it, are still trying um, to do it. And um, we're seeing results so far, but um, it just takes a little bit of time, takes some setup, but hopefully now you know what to do and you can do it too. Excellent. All right, Eric, if you have a follow-up question, let us know. All right, next one comes in from Amy. Hey, Amy. Amy says, how does it use the location? We have customers from all over the country. So does that mean that if they are very far away, they won't be served our ads, even if they were on our website? How far away does it go from the dealership? Well, you can set your parameters for that. Um, so if you're doing something like nationally, you're going to be able to, like Camping World did. Um, so just pay attention to the um, audience um, and targeting parameters in the ad set, and you're going to be able to do that. Um, it has certain um, areas that you can target. Okay, fair enough. Amy, thank you so much. Great question. Good luck with that. All right, let's see. <clears throat> CJ, great information. You mentioned on the slide DAA versus DPA, the algorithm behind the two types of dynamic ads. My question, in the near future, will we be able to see, will we be able to use the VIN number of a vehicle for targeting? 
Yeah, so you actually, um, you can actually track certain parameters and we track down to the VIN. Um, so take a look at all the optional parameters in the documentation and um, you'll see some options for that actually. All right, CJ, thank you so much. Great question. Okay, um, now Jonathan wrote in this question, I believe, before you actually covered it, so real fast. Can you get into the technical details of how the pixel events need to be set up via Google Tag Manager? Specifically, what variables we should use for the custom parameters in the custom event pixels? Yeah, so, um, yeah, very quickly, um, you're going to see examples of it in the documentation, um, and you can pull it from your pixel um, manager on your ads manager, but basically you're just going to take the pixel code and right under the page view pixel code that's in every page that you put your pixel on, mm -hmm. you're going to put those certain events right under the page view. And it's going to depend. If it's a VDP page, you'll put the view content. And you basically, if the pixel um, will, uh, the pixel management dashboard will show you. They'll be like, take this little code and put it right here. So it's very step-by-step um, -step and it explains it. Um, but just make sure that it goes within the pixel code or it, it can go outside depending, um, but the pixel dashboard will show you exactly what to put. All right, great. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Nice question. Thank you. Okay, now I have been going back and forth with this next attendee. I hope you can help him out, all right? So Hi. I'm going to screw up his name, but I'm going to give it the college try. Okay. Jahanzeb. I'm sure I screwed that up, but Jahanzeb wrote in and said... Can you please elaborate on uploading vehicle inventory? I tried it in the past. Most of the largest automotive CRM providers don't even work with Facebook. And then he writes back in, Vin Solutions and HomeNet do not support Facebook. I've tried multiple times. They can't help with inventory feed URL. Then he wrote back again and said, Vin Solutions and HomeNet have no resolution to provide feed for Facebook catalogs. I've already verified and tested, or maybe their staff is just not trained to help most of us on this subject. Gabrielle, I know when you had described it, you said, hey, this is easy. You take your home net link, you put the feed in here, and you're off to the races. Um, he's not having the, the easy, warm, and fuzzies when it comes to this and, and working with those providers. Uh, yeah. You got to work around. You got some... <laughs> yeah, insight that really, we can help <laughs> this is actually I'm actually I'm glad he said something because this is a concern and something that we've seen a lot of and it's something I, I, t I literally just talked with one of my coworkers about yesterday mm. um, so no we've heard um, because I think it's because um, and I'm not too sure how it works on the Google side but a lot of people for a dynamic product ads would take their Google feed and use it because it's easily transferable. It's a little different for dynamic ads for automotive. Um, but um, what I think the, uh, the way that they work with Google is they send that information to Google and then Google might then take a feed and create that feed for you to use on Google. Mm -hmm. We don't have someone who sits around and just makes the feeds and receives it. It's our, we have a very self-serve platform. Um, and I think maybe they're just not used to that. They're getting um, some work. Some people are getting their feeds. A lot of the dealer, um, dealer.com um, people who use those platforms are getting them. It is really hard. Um, it's just a matter of explaining to them. There is no one at Facebook to receive these feeds. It's a self-serve platform. On our end, we are trying hard to educate those people, but it's um, if the dealers as well, if, if you guys can tell them that this is a self-serve platform, there is no one at Facebook that will receive that feed. We have to get, give it to the platform ourselves that will help out. Um, but we are working hard to, to help that out. Um, so um, good question. Hopefully we can help solve that soon. If not, just, just help us educate if you could. I appreciate that. Okay. Jahanzeb did have a follow-up. I apologize. Um, he said, to my knowledge, Facebook is not integrated with any CRM providers yet. Is that true? So we're integrate we're integrated with the, like the larger ones like the sales forces of the world. Um, it's really hard. Um, the automotive specific one. There's certain legalities around some of the biggest ones that they don't allow legally to connect, or the so the smaller ones. It's just hard because keeping up with the technology of the changes of Facebook, it's just hard to do. And only usually the big CRM providers can do that. Um, that is one of the biggest things I've been campaigning for since I've worked here. Um, and I hope one day we find a solve for that. Um, but just know that that's something I will never stop working on. Okay. So. 
Jahanza, thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. I wish you the very best of luck, my friend. Please let us know if you have any follow-up questions that we can help you out with. All right, we still have a ton of questions to get to and not much time. Oh, by the way, he said thank you. Um, so thank you so much for that. All right, let's keep going. Next question comes in from Maurice. Maurice says, does Facebook have any plans to allow the ability to change the product set in ad sets? Anytime I try to use dynamic ads for automotive, after I choose a product set for an ad set, I can never change the product set for the lifetime of that ad set. Not a fan of that feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, no, that's good feedback. Um, I'll, I'll definitely take that feedback to our product team. Um, I think it, I, and I'm not 100% sure, but just knowing how these ads work, I think it's because of the way our algorithm has to work with your product catalog and pixel, it could do like a reset, right? So anytime you make any kind of change, like in your regular ads, it kind of does like a reset and has to relearn. Um, that's something that you don't really want to happen, especially with dynamic ads for automotive, um, any kind of automated ad. Um, I will give that feedback though, um, but I think that's probably why. Um, so uh, you just want to make sure to create multiple vehicle sets um, beforehand if you can, or just set up ad templates if you know you're going to maybe change it up and pause that ad set that you might not, or the vehicle set you might not use in a different um, campaign while you're using the other one. I think that's a great idea. All right, Maurice, um, he says, cool, thanks. <laughs> All right, good luck with that, Maurice. We wish you the best of luck, sir. Okay, next question comes in from Shay, who wants to know what percentage of total business revenue relies upon dynamic ads? Um, ooh, I have, that is a really great question. Uh, they come up with know. the good questions, Double G. Yeah, <laughs> total business revenue, that's really hard to say. Um, I think that it's going to have to be something you test against to see if these ads are working for you. But one of the most important things is t not only testing it out, but tracking the vehicle sales like Hub City Ford did with the offline events tool. That's going to tell you a lot, um, a, more of a story if your ads are really working. So try it out. Um, try a small budget towards it for um, to start. Maybe take like 30% of your current um, Facebook budget and then try it out. And then if it starts working, start shifting more um, if you want to. Um, but I think it's just going to depend on a case-by-case -case basis. All right. Shay, thank you so much. Great question. Tough question. Um, yeah, good question. Gabrielle, we got 15 more minutes of awesomeness together. And then we're going to close out the show, okay? Still a lot of great questions coming in, so you're doing amazing yeah. as you always do. <laughs> All right, here we go. Scott has the next question. Scott wants to know, what are other ways to show auto intent? Could it be through watching a video ad we publish or engaging with our page in some way? What's your best advice, Gabrielle? Yeah, so if you're not using dynamic ads for automotive and you want to um, use ads um, to show, to see what intent users are showing, video. Um, video is the best thing um, that you can put on a platform. It is the most popular thing you can put on a platform. Um, people like things that move, but the thing that's really important is to do mobile optimized video. Do not take your dealership ads from TV. They are great, I am sure, but do not put them on Facebook. Make sure you're optimizing for the mobile experience. There are tools out there, um, free apps like Legend, um, that ha allow you to do that um, on your phone. So make sure you use those, and then you can do a video views campaign. Um, it's an objective, and you can track um, how, how many users watch 50% of your videos, 75%, 100%, and then you can take that audience and then retarget them with vehicle ads if you want. Again, amazing. Now, Scott, if you have a follow-up question, let us know. Let's see if we can help you even more, okay? Um, awesome, awesome, yeah. Power of video cannot be understated, I think. Okay, <clears throat> Scott has the next question. Can Gabrielle go over how to find the DAA create ads area on Facebook? In other words, is it in the normal ads manager? If not, where is it? Again, I feel like you covered this, but um, should he just refer back to your deck or is there a secret? <laughs> yeah, so when you go into your ads manager, Facebook.com slash ads slash manager, if you're going straight to your ads manager, when you see in the interface, there's going to be a button on the left-hand side that says create campaign 
or something similar, you're going to press that button and it's going to open up to all the objectives that are available, that screenshot I showed, and that's where you're going to see catalog sales. Love it. All right, Scott, thank you so much. Um, now, Jonathan skipped out on us. I think he did. If he's still here, let me know. But Jonathan skipped out on us, but he did have a couple of interesting questions, so I want to just throw this out there. Um, Jonathan okay. asked, how do you customize the content IDs, and can you explain how the array works? That's where I am stuck. Woo, this is some technical questions. <laughs> he must be um, yeah, yeah. Well, if, if, if anyone could do it, it's you, right? <laughs> oh, okay. This is going to really put my brain to work. Can you make it Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so an array is basically a piece of code that allows you to show that you have numbers attached to your vehicles. Um, you're going to see an example of it in our developer docs, and I will tell you, our solutions engineers are top-notch phenomenal and recently went through all of the documents with our product team to make it easier for you guys to see with exact examples. Reference the developer docs and it will show you what it means by array and it will show you what you need to paste in. Um, it's so helpful. I am not super techie and I read that and I was like, this, I understand it all. It's amazing. Um, so check that out. Okay, fantastic. Jonathan, thank you so much. Great, great, great questions. Okay. Still a ton of questions. Um, Christopher, and again, I think you covered this, and this probably came in earlier right before you, you actually showed them, but he says, I'm not sure how to put our inventory into Facebook. What feed do we use? If you had access to all the different feeds available, which one would you use? <laughs> Let me ask you that, Gabrielle. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not too versed in the specific feed providers. Um, that is not my area of expertise. I wish it was. Well, I mean, would you try and hook it up with one of the CRMs, or would you use the inventory feed, like from a Vin Solutions or a HomeNet or something oh, like that? I would 100% use the inventory feed from a partner, uh -huh. because if you do it manually, you have to upload that template or, or, or like a CSV file or something mm -hmm. with all of your vehicle inventory. And when um, you have to update it manually, so if you get rid of a vehicle, you have to go in that Excel doc, it, remove it, and then re-upload it. Mm. That is, I mean, we give that option for people who can't access um, URL feeds, but it's so much work. Um, so if you can get a feed provider, do it, because they help um, change that feed as it happens for you, and it's very automated. Otherwise, this set it and forget it mentality I like to have with dynamic ads, you're going to be like, set it, forget it, and never come back again. <laughs> uh, I don't want that to happen. So okay. try to use a provider. And I remember you said, hey, you can set it to update. If, if, and I know you said, hey, the most popular settings are one hour, mm -hmm. one day, something like that. W mm -hmm. What would you do? I would do, um, I would do daily. I think daily is perfectly fine enough. Um, you know, we're not like an e-commerce company that has like, you know, a flash sale of something and they need mm -hmm. to track it hourly. So um, I think daily is fine, but you can only do scheduled uploads of updating the feed if you use the URL. Um, so make sure that and that's with a feed provider. So try to go okay. that route if you can. I highly encourage it. Thank you so much. All right. Next question. We are cruising here. Scott has the next question. Can a catalog be uploaded once but be used across multiple ad accounts? Um, so you can share your catalog um, with multiple ad accounts if you want to. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, you can do that um, within the catalog manager once you're assigning roles. You can, mm -hmm. you can do it that way. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much, Scott. All right, next one. Oh, this is a good question. Jonathan. Jonathan says, can you preview your dynamic ads before they go live? Hmm, okay, so previewing is a little hard because they're dynamic based on what you um, searched on the website. So when you saw the camping world um, case study, you saw that it was just a template. That's mm -hmm. what it would look like. So you wouldn't necessarily see, um, but it pulls the images from your website. It pulls the information, um, like if you want to track, put price on it from your website. So just know that the images and the things on your website is what's going to appear. Um, and you have certain options within your catalog manager, say if it, you want to make a square image and you have like a rectangular image and you want to make sure it crops correctly, you have options to crop your images so that they display correctly. All right. Thank you so much. A great question, Jonathan. All right. We're getting down to it. CJ says, this presentation is so very helpful. Have you seen this work better for dealerships 
opposed to an individual salesperson that uses the same site as the dealership, or does it matter? Um, I would stick, um, I mean, if your dealership allows you to run ads like this, um, then great. Um, but you want to be careful to not run ads at the same time as your dealership because if you're competing basically against your own dealership for the same audience, which can drive up costs for both of you. So I would talk to your dealership if they're already running these kind of ads. I wouldn't do them yourself at the same time. But if they're open to allowing you to run ads on behalf of the dealership, you can. The one thing I would caution is that if someone sees a single dealership um, salesperson mm -hmm. running ads, they usually tend to be turned off more so because they want access to the dealership itself for all of the information. Um, so they tend to resonate more with uh, the actual dealership. I, you know what, Gabrielle? I thank God you're here because I would not have thought about that. But that is an excellent point. All right, CJ, best of luck, my friend. I hope it works out for you. Uh, yeah. Great answer. Thank you. CJ wrote back in, so thank you. All right, we're getting down to it. Last handful of questions. Matt wrote in, how do you match up the offline events date and the ads so you can see the ROI? Right, so, um, and this could be a whole other webinar, um, <laughs> but uh, the offline events, um, what basically um, when you um, at, upload your events, there's a download template mm -hmm. in your offline event tool. It will ask for the event date. The event date is basically if you have the date that the car was purchased, that's what you want to do. From that event date, our offline event system will look 28 days back to see if that vehicle purchasers saw uh, one of your ads, and it will show you that. Um, I encourage you to go to our help center and search for offline conversions, and it, it gives you a lot of information on how to set up and looking at that date there correctly. All right, Matt, thank you so much. Great question. All right. Uh, Scott wrote in, said, for offline events, do you have any info on Hub City Ford's views versus their click stats? Now, I, I know you said not. that they could, they could get that, um, that report off online, but is that like additional information that might be in there that maybe you don't have? Yeah, so you can have that, and that's not something that we have that we can share, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. But yeah, it gives, you have the option of doing view through and click through. Um, on the offline events. Okay, but it's just not in that particular case study, yes? Right, yeah, okay. I know it's not in this one. Okay. All right, Scott, look at you trying to trip us up here. Okay, another question from CJ came in. The combination of lead gen and DAA is great. To get the best results for a lower CPA, do you use the campaign level budgeting playing a major role in the success of a campaign? And if so, Will Facebook open this feature up to all DAA programs in the, I'm sorry, campaigns in the near future? Um, campaign level optimization should be available globally, but yeah, um, I would say try it. I've seen a lot of great results with it because the budget optimizes to the individual ad sets if you have more than one, rather than doing a specific budget to each ad set. So definitely try it out. I've seen great results across the board. All right, fantastic. Um, thank you, CJ. I know we gotta we gotta hustle this up. Daniel wanted to know if you can connect him with the Oculus Go Automotive team. <laughs> I wish there was one. I would be like I would be on it. Um, <laughs> Daniel, I'm sorry. I don't think. I mean, Gabrielle knows a yeah. lot, but this is the first time I've ever heard her say no. Um, okay, Scott wants to know: Is there a recommended budget to use for dynamic ads? Would that be best determined by web traffic? Yeah, so web traffic is a big one. Um, one of the things, um, Scott Meyer from Nine Clouds, he created this Facebook rule of one, and I love it. Mm -hmm. It's a dollar per day per thousand people for ads. You can look at, you can take your website visitors and say a dollar per day per thousand website visitors and try that to start and see what happens. Oh, excellent. All right. Um, Timothy wrote in, will a video of this presentation be available later? Yes, it will. Go to dealeron.com slash webinar to view any of our past webinars. And Lisa, last question. Stepped away, may have missed it. Can you trace a sale from an ad? Know that the lead was created from a special ad. Yes, you can do that via offline conversions. So check out our help center and um, it will show you how to get that set up. Okay. I'm sorry, I lied. One last question came in from Scott. How many goals will Messi score today? Oh, God, hopefully more than he did last time. I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping. We'll see. Gabrielle Garrison, always bringing the fire. I love working with you. Thank you so much. You, 
surpassed all of our expectations. Fantastic presentation. And hopefully it won't be long before you and I get to see each other live and in person again, ma'am. Uh, any last words you want to give to the audience? Guys, thank you so much for attending. I know this is a lot of information, but let me tell you, if, if you implement this and it works for you, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I actually do try to respond as fast as I can. I do care about all of you. Um, I wish I could talk to you guys more, but LinkedIn is the best way to reach out to me. So please contact me. All right. Um, uh, also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a very short survey. It is three questions, people. Three short questions. Please fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation. And hey, are you losing valuable traffic because of a slow mobile site? That's no good. Our friends at Google estimate that well over half of your website traffic is coming from mobile devices. But don't worry. Dealer on now offers a mobile site speed test for free. You can get yours by filling out that question in our survey. Just give us your URL and let the magic begin. It's a great way to see how your site stacks up to the competition. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer on webinar. And trust me, you don't want to miss it. Texting strategies from clicks to conversions to car sales. Texting is huge. In fact, it's the preferred primary means of communication among today's consumers. So why don't more dealerships have a texting process that effectively drives showroom visits and sales? Well, want to learn how to convert your website visitors into showroom visits with a solid texting strategy? <laughs> Yeah, you do. We're bringing in Peter Quinones to show you his incredibly successful strategy so you can implement smart and efficient texting sales processes at your dealership. Attendees of this fast-paced one-hour webinar are going to learn how to increase your text channel bandwidth, why in-house texting agents drive more meaningful conversations, why text conversions are not the same as chat or messenger, conversational SMS and SMS marketing, and how to achieve texting nirvana with company-wide adoption and channel branding. So if you're ready to implement a comprehensive texting strategy that increases showroom visits and sales, then this is the must-see presentation you can't afford to miss. Register now. Don't forget, weekly webinars are held Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics, well, I'd love to hear from you. Reach out to me. I'm everywhere. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, you name it. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or you can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. I'd love to hear from you. Now, I'm going to thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And I hope to see you all on another webinar in our continuing education series. Take care, everyone. Mwah.